Hello friends, welcome back again to Python tips and tricks. After a break, we are again back with a new topic and today's topic of discussion is data frames. So before going into the tips and tricks of data frames, I will like to take you through what a data frame is. So data frame is a data structure and it's two dimensional. It has rows and columns and each of the columns supports a specific data type. Within a data frame, we can actually do different types of functions such as access the contents, modify, sort, filter, and even delete. Now, in today's video, I will take you through five tricks by which you can make smart operations with data frames. So we'll start first start by applying a function to a column in a data frame. So for this, what I have done is like taken a very simple uh, data frame, which has one column and it has the first four digits uh, of the number system. And I would first run this cell. And then what I have done, I have actually uh, defined a function, which technically adds a, a one to any number so and i have named it add one so now the task is to apply this function in onto the column a and for that we can use multiple kinds of functions two of them being apply and map so i would first see uh, show you guys how we can use the apply function so it's pretty simple we would just call that specific column of that data frame and then by doing dot apply we have to call the function that we defined just earlier on i will run that and then when i print that specific column as you can see the initial numbers have been incremented by one now i said like you can also use the dot map function and in the dot map function we can do the same thing just apply dot map and call that function to that column and doing that and printing will give us the new data frame with the individual numbers again in incremented by one now another important thing or function that we all come across is like trying to play with text in uh, data frames when one of the columns has text in it. So what I would show you guys like how we can filter a data frame based on text in a column. So as you can see what I have done, I have taken a data frame uh, which has name, age and city of five people. And then my first uh, task would be to filter the data frame in by the city column, which has the string O N in it. So what I would be doing is like, I would be using the contains a uh, function, which is a string function. And I would be calling that specific column and applying dot str dot contents, and then pass that specific stream, which I am lo looking for. So running this script would actually then give me that specific row item, which has the name of the person and it and his age based on that search criteria. So as uh, we know that in the data frame that we had declared, the London was the only city which had O N in it. So only one row has been given as an output. On other hand, sometimes we might need an exact match. So for example, let's take uh, this example where we would try to find out the person or persons uh, who actually live in Paris. And in that regard, we would be applying the equals operator just like when we do uh, apply in the if else statements. So as you can see, we have passed on the logic that if dfct equals equals Paris and passed it into that data frame and running this script would actually give us the details of that person uh, who lives in the city of Paris. Now these were two straightforward uh, like condition based approaches on a text. 
but let's suppose we have multiple conditions to work with so uh, and for su doing such an uh, task we might need to take into consideration multiple variables so for example what we have taken here is like we have applied two conditions first of all the age of the person should be greater than 25 and the person should not be living in the city of Tokyo so based on that we have applied two of these uh, logics which we normally do in an if else statement as well and then we have passed into the initial data frame and now when we print it it would give us those uh, individual row items which follow this criteria uh, coming up next is the group by function and the group by function is a very important function in terms of doing data frame operations on large uh, databases or like data which is stored in various uh, servers and if you want to gather insights and numerical understanding of those data sets group by is a very critical uh, function so what we have taken is like we have taken the employee details of a comp of a certain organization and we have department location employee salary and experience and uh, what we want to do is like group by uh, two uh, separate columns in which case this is department and location and then we would try to find out the mean salary for each group so this is pretty much uh, like straightforward what we have done is like we have just applied the dot group by function on these two columns as you can see department and location and then when we have got the group by data frame on the salary we have applied the dot mean function so you might be wondering what does the dot reset index means the reset index actually what it does it's resets the the grouped by data frame into the initial index in which it was and in that way you can find out the group department and location wise mean salaries so let's see what this output gives us so as you can see like for every department the employees who are across various locations their mean salaries have been provided in the output now on the other hand uh, this is was a simple aggregation by the mean function but let's suppose we want to do multiple aggregations on different columns so for example in the previous example that i just showed you we had didn't we had applied the mean function only on the salary but now we want to apply the mean and the max aggregations on the salary and also uh, we want to find the average minimum and maximum in the experience in terms of years as well so what we would do out here is like we will apply the dot agg or the dot ag function on the grouped by data frame and ex directly explicitly mention out what are the aggregations we are trying to do and then we would flatten out the column names so that for every aggregate there is a separate column that's being created so and that we would be for that we would be using the join and the strip functions for naming the column names again and once we have done that we would expect the output to give separate columns for each of the aggregations for the individual parameters that we were looking for so let's see what this output gives us so as i said for each of the aggregations that we had asked for there have there are separate columns that have been created like for salary we have salary mean and salary max and for experience also we as you can see we have three dif different columns for each of the aggregations starting from uh, the mean the lowest and the maximum i will 
end this off by uh, a custom aggregation function. So in group by we have the traditional aggregate such as mean, uh, max, median, mode. But if you want to create your own custom uh, aggregation function you, and apply that, you can also do it. So what uh, we have done out here, we have tried to find out the salary range of a certain uh, designation across departments. So what we have done is like we have called this function called salary range and we have tried to uh, return the difference between the maximum and the minimum values of us of a certain person so so for that we again have or we already have our grouped by data frame and on that we would be applying this function by calling the dot agg function and as earlier we have again reset the index based on the salary range out here so this would actually give us the custom aggregation of the salary range by department and location and let's see what we get so as stated as you can see so for every department across locations we now have the salary range of employees and in and this is a classic example of applying a custom aggregation function so uh, i would be also putting up another video on uh, data frames. Data frames are a very broad topic and they can't be covered in a single video. So that was all from me today. Please do like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.